Nevertheless, the questions about the ethics and authenticity of Flaherty's stagings persist. And they were to persist with every documentary he made over the next 30 years. Take this ritual tattooing, for example, found by Flaherty for his next film, Moana, set in the South Seas. Was it really what the title says it was? A time-honoured ceremony long practised in the Samoan island of Savai'i. Or did he set the whole thing up from scratch? Reviving a tradition that had died out just because without an Arctic blizzard or great hunt, he could think of no other climax. It's like a, a gift from the parents. It's stage of life. I am a as a man. I be a fine girl, but then I was a fulfilling a makua. I would say a lay. Ah, I am fine a fine one. On a on a manga on a puaka inga iya. Kahal kama jiki on a puaka le aka. I am a man a lay lal manga. But it wasn't a concern for the state of native culture that caused Hollywood studio boss Jesse Lasky to contact Bob in 1923 with a proposition he could not resist. Make me another Nanook somewhere, anywhere. Flaherty was a hot property. So off he goes with Lasky's agreement that he could proceed in the same unconventional way he had on Nanook. Long periods of research on site, leading to a film shot 100% on location, indeed processed on location too, without any real script or professional actors. Flaherty did not travel alone to Savai. This time Francis was not to be left behind. Clearly there was to be no South Seas maiden to distract him as the Inuit Nyla had done. And Francis brought their three children with their nanny to make sure. Francis though was far from coming along just to keep Bob from local romantic entanglements. She had become a very fine stills photographer. And with Moana, she established her role as a prime influence on Bob's work. In fact, she took a prominent screen credit as co-producer. But she soon realized that there was no excitement, 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 as she put it, to film on Samoa. Looking for it, she increasingly felt was ludicrous. Instead of a Nanook, a great hunter, they found a master of the Siva dance, Ta'avele, to play the hero Moana. Francis described him as a Samoan Nijinsky, the fabled star of the European Ballet Russe dance company. 
and Moana was given a little brother called Pea. I think generally there's a humor attached to it. If I see my family people on the screen or see it, the, the, the immediate reactions of Samoans is uh, to laugh. It's laugh of appreciation. It's laugh of seeing something on the film that's dear to them. I think general depiction of life at the time, uh, things that we're doing sort of every day, uh, go about in families, go to the plantation, go to the ocean and doing things, husking, starting fires, I identify very closely uh, with those things and I'm in 50s, 60s, 70s, they were still doing those things. Historically speaking, that's, that's a, a valuable part of it. But it's a stage thing. It's not everyday life. If that was the intention uh, to depict Samoans in everyday life, that was certainly not everyday life. Uh, they're aware. Uh, the dancing, you don't just get up and dance like that. There has to be an occasion. And the topless. I think they're offending. All right. It took Bob two years of shooting and he finished up with a quarter of a million feet of film. 66 hours worth. Studio shooting ratios usually used a third or so of what was shot, with takes repeated because of unsatisfactory performances or other technical reasons. Lasky needed about 90 minutes. Bob, who was just repeating what he had done over years in the Arctic, was going to have to throw away about 97.5% of his material 